Alright, so in this video I'm going to be talking about some of the specifics of movement, specifically the um, different methods of movement that you'll be using in speedrunning. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first movement method that I'm going to talk about is the main movement method that's used in the game. It's just running around like this. You just push the joystick to run, and we don't use this too often in speedrunning, but that's the method that's intended for the game. Now, the other method that's made that's intended for the game is long jumping, which looks something like this. That's what long jumping looks like. It's just like that. Now, long jumping we do use quite frequently in the game, especially if we're going downhill. If you're going downhill, you do always want to be long jumping because, as you can see, it's faster than just regular walking. It's quite a bit faster than regular walking. The problem is, if you're long jumping uphill or long jumping on flat ground, You'll notice you get this slide, which ends up being slower than just regular walking. And we don't want that because that slows us down. So, is there a method that we can use that's faster for, for going on flat ground or uphill? Well, actually, yes. It's what we call slash jumping. And it looks something like this. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm doing an attack and then canceling it out with a jump. And as you can see, that does move me forward even if I'm not pushing the joystick. Now these are sloppy ones, I'm just pressing each button one at a time, but if I slide my finger across like this, you can see it's a bit faster, and if I'm running and I do that, you can see I do get quite a bit of speed from that, like what I'm doing right now. So if you combine all three of these movement methods, walking and slash jumping and long jumping, that would be the optimal way to move around. Now with long jumping, I should probably mention, comes another thing called long jump glitch, and I probably can't get it just by trying to get it, because I do hardly ever get it just by trying to get it. But basically what long jump glitch is, is the game decides to cut your long jump short instead of giving you the full long jump. So you'll notice when I get long jump glitch that instead of continuing to move forward, like that, he just kind of stops in the air for a second, kind of like that, and then falls almost straight down instead of continuing to move forward. Um, I can't really get it too often, but that's what it looks like. And the best way to avoid long jump glitch in most cases is to try to keep the camera above your head. There are certain cases where putting the camera above your head will actually increase the chance of long jump glitch. I'll talk about those when it comes down to those strats. But for now, just keep in mind that most of the time you want to have your camera above your head. Now, there are a few other methods of movement that I want to talk about. One of those movement methods is sneaking, which looks like this. You basically just hold down the same trigger that you press to long jump. Now, sneaking is hardly ever used in the run. The only times that I can think of it being used are in inside info and in this level, for when you need very specific movement in a small area. So, like right here, you would sneak in order to get very small movement in a small area. Things like that. Now, there is another type of movement that's built into the game, and that's jumping. Jumping is basically just you're doing something to get from one area to a higher area, just like this, just like the way I'm doing it right now. Now, jumping, when you're jumping, most of the time when you're doing regular jumps, it's going to be when you have your ring on, because if you don't have your ring on, you're going to want to be doing slash jumps or whatever. But if you do have your ring on, and you're jumping. One thing you want to keep in mind is that you don't want to try to do like instant jumps like jumping as soon as you land again because that actually slows you down and makes you move slower. So you want to try to time out your jumps a little bit. Leave a step or two in between each jump like what I'm doing right now. I'm not jumping as soon as I land. Now those are some of the types of movement. Let's talk about another type and that's something that I like to call wall walking. See there's a wall right here and I can't quite walk all the way up the wall. You can see I kind of get pushed back down it. But let's say I'm heading up or down a tunnel like this, and I want to kind of move down the tunnel a bit faster. Well, I could slash jump, but there's actually something that's faster even than slash jumping, and it's what I call wall walking. Because if you walk against these walls at an angle like this, you kind of get pushed along like this, and it's still faster than um, slash jumping down the tunnel even. And that's what I call wall walking, and a benefit to wall walking is when you have a wall that you can wall walk up or along, 
you can do what we call a slide boost, which is basically a long jump against that wall, and you can see you kind of get a slide against the wall and go quite a ways up it, which can be a benefit in some places. We use that in flies and spiders, and we use that in a few places. Um, as you can see, that's quite a nice movement as well. So that's about wall walking. Now I'm going to talk about jump attacks and their jump attack boosts. A regular jump attack kind of looks like this. That's what a jump attack looks like. And basically, in order for you to do a jump attack, your meter needs to be full. Now, a benefit to jump attacking is that with jump attacking, you can both get a forward boost and an upward boost. So I'll go ahead and show the upward boost if I can find a place to do it. Um, I think I might be able to do it in here along some of these walls. But, like, if you do a jump attack at just the right time, you can get an upward boost along the wall. I missed it that time. So I'll try again to show it off, because I do want to show off what a slow boost looks like. Um, like that. That's what a slow boost looks like, and you do it against a sloped wall. Basically, it's a jump and then a jump attack against a sloped wall that gives you quite a bit of a boost upwards. There's also just a long jump boost, which allows you to gain a little bit of extra distance from a long jump, so like that, for example. Now, there is one more thing to talk about in regards to movement, and that's water. And water by itself isn't necessarily a component of movement or helpful movement, but water does have a benefit because let's say that I'm falling from a height like this. Well, obviously I'm going to die because that height is pretty high and it's going to kill me. But there's a benefit because if there's a shallow area of water underneath you, like not deep enough to kill you, for some reason landing in shallow water from a long jump or from a regular walk off cause you to not die. I'm not sure exactly why that happens, but I'll show that off here a second. Um once I get over there again. But yeah, if you land in water from a long jump or from a regular walk off of something, kind of like this, for some reason you don't die. Now what's important to note is that if you do a jump attack from that, you will die. If you do a jump attack, you'll die from that. But there's another thing to note about jump attacks, and that's that jump attacks actually reduce the amount of damage that you'll take at the bottom of a ball. So I'll show that off real quick. So let's say that I'm falling from here. So I'm just going to fall off. And you see I take about two and a half hearts of damage. But now let's say that I do that and I do a jump attack at the bottom after my fall, and I completely missed that, which is fine. This trick is a hard trick, which I'll be explaining later in the tutorial, by the way. You'll see exactly how to do this trick. But let's say that I do that same fall, which cost me two and a half hearts. Let's say that I do the same fall, and this time I do a jump attack at the bottom. You can see that only cost me one and a half hearts. And generally a jump attack will do about half of the damage of just a regular fall. So, those are all of the important things I want to note about movement in this video. There's not really anything else to cover in regards to movement as far as I know. So, yeah. That's all there is to this video.